In part one of this video, we met the Arduino Uno, a small microcontroller-based system used to process electronic inputs to produce electronic outputs. We saw how it can be connected to a Raspberry Pi and programmed to print Hello World. We saw how a program, or sketch as it's called in the Arduino world, had two parts, a setup function and a loop function. Before we could compile the code on the Pi and upload it, we had to select UNO from the pull-down menu here and ensure that we had selected the correct port for our device. This was possibly the most complicated selection, but once it was established, the system did not need to be configured again. We also saw that before the digital world of ones and zeros, ons and offs, there was the analog world, where signals could vary and take any value in a continuous range of values. We used the light switch and the light dimmer to illuminate the difference. In the next step, we're going to look at how to set up the Arduino so that it can deal with digital inputs and digital outputs, analog inputs and analog outputs. We start with digital output. We can demonstrate a digital output by using the yellow LED we saw earlier. It can be turned on and off, like the light switch. It's here on the board and is also connected to pin 13 on this header. So let's begin with our two empty functions, void setup and void loop. As before, we have first to set up the Arduino. In our introduction, we said that the Arduino takes inputs, processes them, and produces outputs. To do this, we have to tell the Arduino which pins are to be set up as inputs and which as outputs. As this is a demonstration of digital output, we need to instruct the Arduino to turn pin 13 into an output. Pin 13 output. We could almost read this as plain English. Pin mode pin 13 as an output. It's important to note that the M in pin node has to be capital. It's a way of marking the word out as being special. This form of typing is called camel case. I can't think why. In the parentheses, we have to keep using that word, is 13, the pin number, and output, all in capitals. Note that the editor changes the color of our special words. This is good as it confirms to us that it understands what we are typing and agrees it as being correct. At the end of the line, the please, the semicolon. That completes the setup. So, on to the loop function. Here the command is digital write, open parentheses, 13, comma, high, close parentheses, please. Look at the style. There's a pattern emerging here. The command is in camel case and the pin in parentheses with the digital output high. That's it. So let's compile the sketch, upload and run it. Watch the LED go high, on. Success, if a little dull. Let's turn the LED off. So edit digital right, parentheses, 13, comma, low, close parentheses, please, semicolon. Press the button again, and up it goes, and off goes the LED. Impressive. We now know enough to make the LED flash. Remember the delay function used before? Enter, digital right 13 high, delay 1000. Digital right 13 low, delay 1000. Send a high signal, wait for 1000 milliseconds, i.e. one second. Then send a low signal and wait for another second. As this is in a loop, it goes around continuously. Edit done, press the button, watch and upload the communications LEDs and pin 13 flashes. That's it. Digital output, done, tick. We could draw this circuit quickly for our notes. Here is the Arduino with its pins. The power supply is usually shown as red for positive, here 5 volts, and 0 volts for ground in black. The yellow LED on the board has this symbol and it's connected to pin 13. This type of drawing is called a schematic and is a simplified way of displaying the important parts of a complex system. You may already have seen examples. Here is Cardiff Bus and here possibly the most famous example from the London Underground. This sketch allows us to perform an eye test and ask the question, what's the shortest flash your eye can detect? Try changing the delay to shorten the flash. Are your eyes more sensitive to flashing lights directly from in front of you or when they are at one side? Compare these values with your friends and then ask, is there a way of actually seeing 
an even faster, shorter flash. It can be done. Just work it out. Before we finish this step, let's cover possibly the most important part of coding. The sketch is a program we compile for the microcontroller, and up until now, most of the sketches have been very short and easy to read. But as they grow and become more complex, it becomes useful to enter notes into the code for us to read. Either us as the authors of the code, to remind us of what and why we were doing things, or as a note to others who may also want to use our work. Human readable notes in this code are called comments and can be dropped in anywhere. To mark them special, we start each comment with two backslashes like this. This tells the compiler to ignore what follows and it is not code. You can begin a line with double backslashes or add the line at the end of a line of code after the semicolon. Notice that the editor understands that we are entering comments and displays them as gray text. If you want to add a great block of text, add a backslash star and then enter multiple lines of comments without the need to add backslashes at the start of every line. At the end of the block, add star slash to finish, like this. There's nothing else you need to know about comments. You now know everything there is to know about comments, so please use them. It will impress your fellow authors and remind you of how great your code is. One final point, space out comments and commands in sketches so that they are easy on the eye. This does work, but this is easier to read. The compiler ignores these gaps. They're called white space and cost nothing. The Arduino's compiler ignores white space, so use it freely. That's it. You now know all there is to know about comments and white space. We ask what came before the current digital revolution, and the answer was analog. Digital is like a light switch, on or off, and analog is like a dimmer. that can be full on, full off, and can also vary to all the levels in between. In this step, we're going to look at the analog output from the Arduino. Some microcontrollers include electronics that produce a smooth analog output, like the light dimmer, but the Arduino can't do it, so it cheats. Let's see how it does this before we look at the sketches that controls it. Going back to the light switch, we can switch it on or off. No, quicker. No, quicker. Quicker still, just like the flash program. We can switch it, but so quickly that the effect is that we no longer see the flashing. What we do see is a light that is on for half the time and off for half the time. It therefore appears to be half as bright. If we now keep switching the light, but spend more time with the light on than off, it appears to become brighter. If we reduce the amount of time the light is on, then it will appear to get dimmer. This is the method the Arduino uses to fake an analog output. It's called pulse width modulation, or PWM, because the width of the high pulse controls the brightness. The longer the width of the pulse, the brighter the light. The narrower the pulse, the dimmer the light. Let's see how this works. For this demonstration, the schematic is the same as for the digital output. For the software, we start again with our two familiar functions. Set up pin 13 as an output and add some comments. Now, digitally write a high for 10 milliseconds and then a low for 10 milliseconds. Compile and upload this. A half bright light. Oh, if we change these two values so that the light is on for 18 milliseconds and off for two, compile and upload, it gets brighter. Change the delays again, this time so that the light is on for two milliseconds and off for 80 milliseconds, compile and upload, well, the light is hardly on. So we can now tick analog out, although this is a little bit of a cheat. You probably recognize this and know what it does. It's a joystick from a games controller, and in this step, we are going to connect it to the Arduino and program it. If you look closely at the parts that are normally hidden, you see there are two black parts that are just like smaller versions of a light switch dimmer. They rotate inside as the stick is moved. One back to front and one from side to side. They produce analog outputs. Oh, on the right here, there's a tiny micro switch that records when you've 
pushed the knob down. This is a digital on and off output. The connections are made by these five pins. They are labelled ground, black, plus 5 volts red, VRX green, VRY yellow and SW blue. And we've colour coded the wires to make the connection simpler. If we add a switch to our schematic drawing it looks like this, where we can turn it on or off. The dimmer part of the joystick is drawn like this, and then moves up and down. Let's now take a tour of the Arduino board. This black block with the 28 pins is the device that does all the real work. It's the microcontroller. All of the surrounding devices are there just to support it, and we can identify these. We are already using the USB port to connect to our device, and this is connected via this small black IC here. If we needed further juice, we could also connect another power supply via this connector here. These components are used to control and smooth the power supply. This metal case houses a small piece of crystal that vibrates electronically at 16 million times a second, like a very, very high-speed gong or tuning fork. If the microcontroller houses the brain and the memory on the board, then this provides the heartbeat. This leaves the most important connections, these headers around the outside of the board. They allow us to insert wires and are labelled. These are the six analog input pins, and here is an example of something a little peculiar that we will often come across in computing. At school, we often start counting at one, but in computing we start at zero. So the six analog pins here are labelled A0, A1, A2, A3, A4 and A5. We will see this unusual counting scheme again later on. In this power section, we are interested in the plus 5 volt supply and the two ground connections. Over here on the other side are the digital pins that can be programmed as digital inputs or digital outputs. We have already seen the LEDs. The green power LED, the two yellow LEDs that flash when the Arduino communicates with your device and this single yellow LED that we've already used that's connected to pin 13 of the header. Always disconnect electronics before making connections just in case of accidents. It's quite safe to pull out the USB connection at any time. Just pulling out the power supply from a Pi will eventually cause problems, but the Arduino is less susceptible to disconnection problems. We'll cover electronics in forthcoming steps. For now, connect the black wire to either pin labeled GND ground. Our supply in this project comes from 5 volts, so connect the red wire to the plus 5V. Red and black wires are typically used for the power supply, but the colours for the next three connections are my choice. For the joystick analog output labelled VRX, I've used a green wire and connected this to the A0 pin. For the VRY pin, I have used a green wire. I haven't, I've used a yellow wire and connected it to A1. The digital output from the switch labelled SW I have connected to the digital pin labelled 2 using a blue wire. Our final schematic now looks like this, with the switch connected to pin 2 and the two sliders from the joystick connected to pin A0 and A1. With this done we can return to the software and set up the Arduino. The process should now be familiar. Although we've connected all of the pins from the joystick, we will only use the digital input for this step, which is why it's called digital in. In the editor, enter the starting lines, void setup, void loop. We've connected pin two as the input from the joystick. So don't keep this a secret from the Arduino. In setup, we enter pin mode two, input pull up. The pattern should now start to emerge with pin mode in camel case. And in the parentheses, the pin number we want to use to set up pin 2, and in capitals the fact that we want it to be set up as an input. We will explain why we use input underscore pull up rather than just plain input later in the electronics part of this course. And don't forget the please, the semicolon at the end of the line. So the pin is set up to be used as an input. What are we going to do with the value when we read it from the pin? A really trivial task would be to switch that LED on pin 13. And we know how to do that from the previous step. Set up pin 13 as output, now the loop. 
If we consider what we want our program to do in simple steps, we could say, read the digital input from pin 2, and then write the digital output to pin 13. If we write a program that follows these two steps, then we need to make up a name for the reading we are going to take. Now, this is very bad practice, but it's done for effect. As the read and write are two commands, we need somewhere to temporarily store the value. We can name this anything. To prove it, let's call it something stupid. Let's call it dog. We could have called it anything we like. So the command would read dog equals digital read two. And what do we want to do with dog? Well, write it to bin 13. So digital write 13 dog. We use dog to store the value from read and then write it to the LED. Dog equals digital read pin 2. This uses the new command to read a digital input, digital read. The digital reading from the switch is in dog, so now we have to output dog, which uses the command we used in the digital step. So digital write to pin 13, the value held in dog. Just checking on the compilation by clicking on the tick, and we get this red error. It's quite helpful. In function void loop, it says, error dog was not declared in this scope. What this means is that we did not warn the Arduino that we were going to use dog, or we did not declare that we were going to use dog. But what is dog? Dog is the value we read in from pin 2. It's a digital value we know that's going to be 1 or 0. Now this is where the exclamation mark appears, as I have to say that the Arduino understands two types of number. Whole numbers, like 1, 2, 4, 8, 9, and even minus 6 and minus 100, which are referred to, in computing terms, as integers. Integers, whole numbers. Notice I didn't say 8.0 or minus 100.342, as these are not integers. They are what is known as floating point numbers, as they contain a decimal point that floats somewhere around inside the number, like 6.7, 3.45, 10.244, and minus 8.93. Just as examples. So integer is a whole number with no decimal points, and floats is when a decimal point is seen floating around in the number. While we're mucking around with the terms used in computing, we can also say that we can start dog with a value of zero, which is called initializing dog to take the value of zero. We have to warn the Arduino that we are going to use the whole number, but in computing terms, we declare that we are going to use an integer called dog. And we do that up here at the very top, int dog equals zero. When we verify this, all is well, and we can upload it to see if it's working. Tra-la! We could stop here, but I can complicate things. We can get away without using dog at all. We can combine the digital read and digital write commands into one line, like this. Does this make any sense? We can insert one instruction inside another to make a shorter command. Is this a good thing, or does it make our code more difficult to read? Anyway, we've seen two options. One, where we declared a variable that we called dog, and the second, where we crush everything up to make ourselves look clever. Perhaps we should add a few comments to help us remember or explain to others what we were trying to achieve. Either way, we can do a digital read, tick off digital read, tick. In this section, we looked at digital read, which unsurprisingly was in camel case, digital read. We wrote two versions of the same program. The first where we plodded step by step through the process of reading the digital input and storing the value in dog. And the next thing was writing the value dog out using the digital write command. This program produced an error because the Arduino had not been told to make space for dog. Dog is not a dog. It's a name, or a container for the number we've read in from the switch on the joystick that can only be 0 or 1. So that's an integer, not a floating point number that includes a floating decimal point. In computing terms, we had to declare space for the integer we called dog. And this declaration 
went at the very top of the sketch. We set the original value to zero, which in computing terms is called initializing. All then work well. The second version of the program was shorter and possibly more difficult to understand, where one command was included in another. The compiler is clever enough to sort this out and produce code that the Arduino could run. Flush with success, shall we write dog to the serial output? We have sent text down the USB connection before, so modifying the sketch is simple. In the setup we include serial begin, and in the loop we write the value dog to the output. We will also add a delay of oh, 1000 milliseconds to stop us being flooded with readings. So, upload this and run. Oops. Ah, now this is a mistake. Something's gone wrong here. Looking again at the program, the problem is with this print line. The key point to understand here is that we do not want to print the word dog. That is what we are doing. What we want to do is to print the value inside dog. Remember what we said, dog was a container. So, remove the speech marks. Recompile, upload, and start the serial monitor. And tra -la. This is the value of the variable dog, the one or zero, as the button is pressed. It's a common error, and like missing up the semicolon at the end of the line, everybody makes it at some point in their programming career. Tick off digital in, tick. We know everything about how it's done, and it leaves us now only with analog in. We connected the joystick in the Arduino in the last video using pins A0 and A1 as the analog inputs. We can show these in our schematic. The movement of the joystick can be represented by the movement of the slider, taking all of the values from off to on and back. During our tour of the Arduino board, you may have noticed that the digital pins can be input or output, and had to be programmed in the setup as input or output. The six analog pins, a0 to A5, on the other side of the board, are dedicated just to being analog input pins. So the Arduino knows that they are dedicated to being analog input pins and therefore does not have to be told in the setup. They are already just analog inputs, nothing else. Our program is then really simple. In fact, to make things really simple, let's just modify the previous program and print the value received from the analog port and write the value directly to the serial monitor. Being lazy like this is not really bad. Cutting and pasting saves a good deal of time and can reduce errors, so long as we keep on top of exactly what's going on. We need to think of a name for our variable. Let's choose something a little more descriptive than dog. This time, let's use joystick X. Replace the digital read for an analog read and assign it to joystick X like this. Leave the delay. As with dog, we need to tell the Arduino to reserve some space for the variable. Stick it at the top, as we did with dog. In computing terms, declare it at the very top of the sketch as an integer and initialize it to zero. Before we compile and run this sketch, what do we expect to see as we move the joystick? Compile, upload, run and start the serial monitor. Was this what was expected? Move the joystick down and the value falls to zero and then up it goes to oh, over 1020. Is this what was expected? Well, all of the six analog input pins operate in exactly the same way, sending out values from zero as a minimum to 1023 as a very maximum. We will leave why this is until the electronic section later. We'll just accept this fact for the moment. Zero is minimum, 1023 is maximum. The output from the joystick has two analog outputs. Let's call the other one joystick Y. Print the value out, and remember to reserve space for the integer variable y and initialize it. And of course, this is connected to analog pin A1. What changes do we expect to do to the program? Well, do a second read from the A1 pin, as that is where the VRY wire was connected. Compile upload and start the serial monitor. Ah. 
Ah, now this is another programming error. Our earlier error was to print dog rather than the value of dog. This is a different type of error. This is an error which is that the program is working but not quite supplying what we want. Both values are mixed up together, so we can't see which value is from which part of the joystick. Knowing what we know so far, how can we correct this error? A simple solution that solves the problem is to print a blank line. We have completed all four combinations of input and output, digital in, digital out, analog in and analog out. But there is one special output that's included here as it's so useful. It is this, it's called the servo and it's used for precise control. It's not a motor that can turn continuously, but a geared motor that can turn and hold its position here over half a turn, 180 degrees. The servo is driven to its position by sending it a precise time set of digital pulses, a little like the analog write we used before. The pulses appear and send the servo arm to zero degrees and the full 180 degrees. This may seem daunting at first, but luckily many folk before us have conspired to make it easy. All we need to do is to send the value in degrees. Let's see how. We can use the joystick to control it. If your servo is not connected, remove any power and plug it into the headers. It's important that each of the three wires is connected the correct way round. The servo requires 5 volt power using the red wire and the ground connected using the black wire. Now some servos use a brown wire rather than black, which is annoying. The pulses that control the servo are connected to the yellow or orange wire. Servos use either of them, there's no standard here. Now, think about what our sketch has to do. After setup, it has to loop round, reading the joystick and sending the output to the servo. There's only one problem. We know that the input from the joystick ranges from about zero to 1023. We need to reduce this down to a range of zero to 180 to drive the servo. Back to the sketch are now two familiar functions. Type in a starting comment to explain what's going on. Our variable will be the value read from the joystick, and we will keep our name from before, joystick x. Thinking about the starting value, I'm going to put in 512 as the middle value of the joystick. So we declare the integer, variable joystick x, and initialize it with value 512. I mentioned before that a lot of folk have worked to make our programming with the servo easier we have to include all of their work in ours. And this turns out to be much easier than may be expected. The command for this is simply include with a hash in front of it like this. In computing terms, this is what is known as including a library and provides us with a wide range of new commands that we are just about to use. Note the hash and the dot h and the use of the angle brackets. The next line is called creating a servo object. We can choose any name for this servo. I'm going to use blue servo. Let's make a comment about that. In the setup, we need to make an instance of the servo and explain which pin it's connected to and comment for completeness. This is one of those commands loaded in from the library. This would fail if the include at the top had been missed out. Have you noticed this pattern again? Blue servo. Dot attach. It's a command, so it needs a semicolon at the end. Please. In the loop, all we have to do is read the value and send it to the servo. Note here the blue servo dot write command. This is the second of those commands that we could use now because of the include above. The include has saved us a lot of work. So we can write the value read from the joystick out to our blue servo, but hopefully you've noticed the error. The servo only accepts values from 0 to 180. The joystick sends out values from 0 to 1023. We need to do some conversion. 
Luckily, the Arduino has a lovely command, just for this very purpose. It's almost as if it was expecting to do this sort of job. It can easily map the values from one range to another using another function. Map this value that ranges from A to B to a range from M to N. Joystick X equals map joystick X 0, 1023, 0, 180. All of the parameters are in parentheses. Now, if you connect all four servos to two joysticks, you can quite easily make this little arm. You have all of the commands to do so.